you don't have to deal with ads anymore. Well, most ads anyway. Hi, I'm Jacob, and sometimes I like to cosplay as a sysadmin. In order to get rid of ads on tons of your favorite websites, you first have to understand how those ads get there. The websites you're visiting are requesting ads from specific domain names. Your computer doesn't know where to look for those domain names or URLs, so it asks a DNS service like Cloudflare or Google. But if you have a service on your local network that can act as DNS, you can block whole domains in every ad that comes with them. The DNS we're going to be switching to for this video is Pihole. Pihole is a free DNS that you can self-host on your own network. It runs on tons of hardware. You can virtualize it, containerize it, or run it on bare metal like we're going to today. You can even run it on something as low powered as a Raspberry Pi Zero W. I'm personally not a big fan of running it on these because I don't think that network infrastructure should be on Wi-Fi. But if you don't mind, this is totally viable. We're however going to be using a Raspberry Pi 5 because we had one on hand and it has an ethernet jack. The process will be nearly identical no matter which Pi you use. The first thing we're going to do is open the Raspberry Pi imager which you can download in the link below. Select the Pi you're going to be using. In our case it's going to be the Pi 5 but again you can use anything you want even a Pi 0W. You can then select the operating system that you're going to be using on the Pi. Since we're going to be running this Pi headless or without a monitor, keyboard, or mouse, I'm going to use a Raspberry Pi OS version that doesn't have a GUI because we're not going to need one. With our operating system selected, we can then select the micro SD card that we want to flash and hit next. You should be greeted with a message asking if you would like to apply OS customization settings. Click edit settings, then a new dialog will appear. This is where you will set things like your host name, username, and password for your OS, along with Wi-Fi credentials, should you need them. Our host name will be pihole.local. Our username and password for this video will be admin and password. I know, very secure. And we don't require Wi-Fi since we will be using Ethernet. Now we're going to go to the Services tab and enable SSH. This is going to let us get into our Pi even without having a monitor and keyboard attached. We go ahead and hit save, then yes, and then yes again. The OS should start flashing to the card. Once it finishes, take out your micro SD card and put it into your Pi, connect any necessary cables from there, and you'll want to navigate to your router's management page. On consumer grade routers, this is usually 192.168.0.1 or 10.0.0.1. In our case though, it's 192.168.1.1. Put in your username and password. Every router is different, but you'll want to find a list of clients or attached devices. On ours, that's right here. Now you're going to want to find the pie hole on the list and copy the MAC address which ours is right here. Now you're gonna to wanna to give your Pi Hole a static IP address, so it won't change even if the power or internet goes out. This is most likely in a setting called LAN or local area network. In our case, we go to advanced, setup, LAN setup, and then we scroll down to the section labeled address reservation and click add. Luckily, in our case, it gives us a list of clients or attached devices. If your router doesn't do this, you're gonna need that MAC address or IP address from earlier. Simply select or add the Raspberry Pi's information, give it the IP address that you want, I'm perfectly happy with this one, and hit add. Now, don't forget, in our case at least, we have to also hit apply. That's going to update the settings of our router the whole router is going to reboot. Now it's time to install Pihole. You'll need an SSH client, which one is up to you, but I'll be using PuTTY. So we're gonna open up PuTTY. We're gonna put in the IP address of the Pi. So in our case, that's 192.168.1.31. Now we're gonna hit open. You're gonna get this dialog that says that, hey, we don't know who the server is. Ignore it, you just installed the operating system on that Pi and it's your Pi. Go ahead and hit accept. Now I wanna log in as admin, which is the username we said on the Pi earlier. 
and then we're gonna put our password of password in. I know you're not gonna be able to see your password as you're typing it. You're just gonna have to trust that you are typing it. Once you type it, go ahead and hit enter and you're logged in. Now you're gonna to wanna to go to the link that we have in the description where the PyHole documentation is. There's a one command way to install it right here. Just copy that to your clipboard and then right click into PuTTY, hit enter. Now the installation of your PyHole should begin. Once it's done its thing, you should see a blue screen with a dialog in your terminal window. Using the arrow keys and enter, go ahead and select OK, then continue. Then in our case, we're going to want to use ETH0 because that is our ethernet. Then this is going to ask us exactly what upstream DNS we want to use. I'm partial to Cloudflare, but any of these will work. And then this is asking if you want the ad blocking lists. Go ahead and say yes. Uh, yes, we do want to install the web interface. That makes things way easier than using the CLI. Yes. Would you like to enable query logging? Now this part is completely up to you. I'm personally going to enable it just because it might make things that I want to block later easier to find. So yes, we'll select show everything. Now it's going to do its thing again. Once the terminal's done doing its thing, after a few minutes, it'll give you a temporary password. You could use this to log into the admin GUI. We're gonna change it beforehand though by selecting OK and then simply typing sudo pihole a p. Then it's gonna ask you what you want the new password to be. I'm gonna make it super secure, so you know what that means password. It's gonna ask you to confirm, so one more time, password, new password set. So now we can close out of PuTTY. Yes, I'm sure I wanna close that session. Now simply go to your pihole IP forward slash admin, in our case, that's 192.168.1.31 forward slash admin, and put in your password. Lo and behold, you now have a DNS server with a list of block sites on your local network. That should mean you're done, right? Well, if we go to a website with a bunch of ads, like speedtest.net, we'll quickly find that our pie hole isn't working. So what's going on? Well, our router doesn't know to send DNS requests to our pie hole. Unfortunately, this part will also be a little different depending on your router, but for us, we go to advanced, setup, internet setup, and now we scroll down to use these DNS servers. We're just gonna delete everything in these. In the primary DNS field, we're going to put the IP address of our Pi hole, but we're gonna leave the secondary DNS blank, unless you have a second Pi hole set up on your network, and then you can have a high availability uh, ad blocking throughout your network. But we only have one for today, so we're gonna do that and hit apply. This is gonna update the settings on our router. Now, depending on your router, you may need to reboot afterward, but in ours, it's perfectly fine not to. Now, you can go right back to whatever page you used before to see ads. In our case, it was speedtest.net. And voila, no more ads. Now, this isn't a completely perfect system. The ad lists are curated by volunteers, and for services like YouTube, the ad domain names change too frequently, so you're not gonna get ad-free YouTube. But for the most part, this should block the ads on your network. For the ones that don't get blocked, you can add them to your personal blacklist by going to Domains, pasting the URL in the domain field, and then write a comment like where you found it. Now we hit add to blacklist. Have a website that's blocked, but you want to go to it anyway. Add it to the whitelist by following the same steps and then at the end, select add to whitelist instead of blacklist. 
Blocking ads is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to local DNS. And if you want to learn more, stay tuned to the Micro Center YouTube channel. And as always, if you want a Micro Center in your town, comment hashtag I want a Micro Center near me.